If you like this video and learned a lot, feel free to share on social media or with friends and be sure to subscribe and like the video as well. Thanks. In this tutorial, you'll learn how to design a fun animation that applies what's called a 2.5D effect or a parallax effect. This is a popular effect used by photographers and graphic designers for online content. Whether it's their portfolio or work for a client, this can be added to photos that are shared on social media or a brand's website. We'll use one photo, and by using selections and masking, we'll separate the subject from the background on a separate layer. We'll use content aware fill, smart object conversion, and then the timeline panel and transform tools to add a subtle effect. So some key considerations, if you use your own photo, you want to use a photo in which the subject takes up a large part of the composition, so it's not just a small part of the overall frame. And we also want a background that's interesting, has some content in it, it's not just blank. Because the point of this effect is to have almost like a 3D look. It's kind of animating and making a 2D object like a photo look almost 3D. Let's get started. Let's use some photo that is a portrait that still has some kind of interesting background, so not too shallow a depth of field. It could have a slightly blurry background, but it needs to have some kind of content in the background, like clouds or urban landscape or mountains or the beach or whatever. And the person in the frame shouldn't be too small for this example, so they do need to fill up a significant part of the composition. Uh, I have provided this photo to follow along with, uh, in the support files or you can use a different photo. Now the first thing we want to do is take this subject and add a new layer that has only that subject on it. And so there are many different ways we can make a selection. We can make a selection and press command or control J and duplicate the person onto a new layer or we could copy and paste the pixels onto a new layer but that's destructive editing and we want to use non-destructive editing so that we can adjust that edge if we need to after the fact. So for that reason, let's just go ahead and press Control J on the PC or Command J on the Mac, and that will duplicate the entire layer there onto its new layer before we've made a selection. And now we need to make a selection of the model here, the subject, and we could use the pen tool. Now if you don't see this, again go to Window and then Tools. And if you don't have the Layers panel up, make sure you go to Window and then Layers. We have both of those open. And so we could use the Pen tool. And if you click, 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 and then click and drag for a curve and so on. And once we have went all around the entire subject, we could right click and then go to Make Selection right there. And that would make a selection and set it to 0.5 pixels feather for this. I'm going to do something that's a little bit quicker for this example because it has a pretty good defined edge here. And again, if you're using a different photo, you do want some kind of photo that has a subject that is delineated a bit from the background. I'm going to go to the path selection tool, click this and press backspace or delete to delete that. And if you do use that method, that's fine, but make sure it says path up here and not shape or pixels. We want to make sure that we're designing a path and then we right click over it and make a selection from it. What I'm going to do though is just use the quick selection tool. And so right up here we can press W on the keyboard or just click this quick selection tool. And we can press left or right brackets on the keyboard to resize or we can of course resize it up here. But I like to use the keyboard because then we can make the brush size smaller as we paint and then larger as needed. So I'm just going to click and drag something like this. All right, so that does a pretty good job. We're going to need to adjust that edge there with the hair in a second, but that does a pretty good job because she is delineated from the background pretty well. All right, so we need to subtract that area right here though from the selection. So we can press Control or Command Plus to zoom in. And I'm going to press Alt on the PC or option on the Mac and that changes it to a minus sign so I'm subtracting from that selection and that does a pretty good job so at this point we need to just refine that edge right there with the hair this is a little bit more challenging than a photo that has someone with a baseball cap or some kind of hat 
or you know they're snowboarding and they have a hood on where it's definitely delineated from the background more but we can fix this what we can do is go to select and then select and mask and from here we can select refine brush tool second from the top and I'm just going to set this to overlay so that we can see the area and again left and right bracket can change the size of this brush so I'm going to make this larger something like that and I'll just paint in here a little bit it just blends that in a little bit better it's a little bit up here as well all right something like that and just right here with the edge so that does a pretty good job we can take more time to really adjust that edge but I think this is fine for this example so I'm just clicking and dragging right there to adjust that edge I'm going to press OK and so we can see it's a little bit delineated there so what we can do is add a mask right here bottom of the layers panel add layer mask with this selection active what that does I'll press the eye icon here so it toggles the visibility of the background layer and so now she's on a new layer if we need to adjust that though see how it's a little bit transparent here we can go to this mask and we can paint black or white in after the fact so if we want to press X it'll flip the white and black foreground and background if it's white in the foreground it will bring those pixels in and we can adjust that even more like so all right and same thing over here I'm just going to paint this in a little bit more this is why we use a mask and we don't just copy and paste or duplicate it onto a new layer so we have the background layer and then the layer on top of that that has just the subject so I'll just say that is the model layer and I'll also double click on the background layer so it's a normal layer that we can edit more so I'll press OK and I'll call this original photo and we want to remove the subject from the original photo as much as possible so to do that what we can do is hold control on the PC or command on the Mac and click this mask right here don't click this but click that so if we click that what that will do it will make a selection of the edge of that mask and then we can go to select and then modify and then expand and it depends on the size of the photo that we're using how much we want to expand that out I'm going to set it to 8 that expands it out a little bit and now what we can do is go to edit and then fill and then content aware set that to content aware and what that does is Photoshop figures out what should be there to match the background the surrounding area so I'll toggle the visibility and we can see what it looks like so it's not perfect what we can do is adjust this even more for example we can use the spot healing brush tool use the left and right brackets if you ever have just that mark press caps lock make sure caps lock is not on but I'm just going to use a nice soft edge brush here and just blend that in a little bit more so we don't have that as much I'm going to go back a little bit here you know something like that and then right here I'm just it doesn't have to be perfect I'm just trying to blend this in a little bit more so we don't run into any problems as we add the effect all right so again that is the spot healing brush tool we just click and drag usually we're using that for retouching but in this example we're using it to blend in that area a little bit more all right now that we have our two layers the one layer that has just the subject and the other layer that has just the background we can bring this into another file so that we can eventually export it as a video all right and let's go to file new or control command n and for this example let's just use 1920 by 1080 pixels and i'm going to uncheck artboards just so we don't have to have artboards necessarily we'll just simplify it with the layers and 8-bit for this example is fine white background that's fine as well let's press create and then over here we can copy and paste those or I can just click it there and then hold shift and click there so we have both layers selected we can click and drag them to this other file over here 
and it is a bit large compared to our new file for this example at least so we can press Control or command minus to zoom out and I can select the move tool here and make sure show transform controls is checked up there and I can click and drag the corner hold shift. I'm not making it too small yet though because we need to convert these to smart objects so I'll press enter for now and what we want to do is over the name of the layer here original photo right click it and go to convert to smart object and then same thing for this top layer convert to smart object what that does is now if we make it smaller than larger for example if I resize this smaller and then later made it larger back to the original it would not pixelate of course it'll pixelate if we make it larger than the original size but making it a smart object enables us to be able to make it smaller if we want or back to the original larger size and it won't pixelate between those so I'm going to zoom in control or command plus and what we can do is go ahead and start the animation process so let's go to window and then timeline and so this is our video timeline panel here so I'm going to expand that a little bit and right here where it says create video timeline if it says create frame animation just click this arrow here so it says create video timeline let's go ahead and click that and so now we have some video tracks model original photo they're named after the layers that they're on and we need to set some keyframes so original photo let's go ahead and set this to the very beginning here and click this transform stopwatch icon that will add a keyframe and then we can go to the end of it and we don't click the stopwatch again we click this keyframe symbol right here so now we have two keyframes what that does is it sets a point in the timeline for there to be some kind of settings applied so what we want to do for this background original photo we want it to go from small to large so I'm going to click and drag the corner and I have the composition something like that just a little bit larger than that so we don't have any background pixels something like that and so once we have it set to about the same size as our composition let's press enter to apply that change and then over at the last one let's not make it too large let's not exaggerate it too much I'm going to make it larger and it will move a little bit so it's not just about resizing it we can also make it move slightly I'll press enter or we can click this check mark up at the top either way now I can preview what it will look so it'll go from that and it'll go like that and we can adjust that after the fact we can select for example we can select this keyframe and make it something like that press enter and there we go all right so that's the background area and then for the model we can set a keyframe at the beginning transform and for the subject we want a subtle effect we want to have the subject go from larger to smaller so I'm going to start out something like that and press enter and then I will set a keyframe another one right there and we're going to make her a little bit smaller in the composition here press enter all right so the effect is something like that and we can press the play icon here on the timeline the first time it renders it's going to look a little bit jumpy most likely so after that first time it plays it should look fine where it's a lot smoother so I zoomed in a little bit and let's press play and we'll see our effect here all right and there's our parallax effect now all we have left is to render this video so we can go to file and then export and then render video or we can click the top right hand corner of the timeline panel and go to render video and that will give us some settings here and it's important to set it to 1920 by 1080 if we want that size if we want to upload it to a web page or a video hosting service at those dimensions and then we can name it and click render if you like this video and learned a lot feel free to share on social media or with friends and be sure to subscribe and like the video as well thanks